Hello and welcome back. This time we are in Bodo in Norway, so very up north in Norway. We came back from um, Mikkeli in Finland uh, not too while ago. And uh, yesterday we did our the same workshop as we did in Mikkeli, so the construction um, assessment workshop, uh, where we tried to figure out with uh, the stakeholders here around in Bodo what does a circular construction sector mean for them but also how we could improve it. I think what was very interesting here, um, again, a bit like Mikkeli. So Mikkeli, if I remember well, is 2,300 square kilometers for 55,000 inhabitants. Here we have more or less the same number of inhabitants, but uh, we have 1,300 square kilometers. Uh, again, this is almost 10 times the size of Brussels, but it's just one neighborhood or one municipality of Brussels. Um, and again surprising, they, they have an airport, they have uh, uh, a big, uh, well, two waste management companies, they have uh, composting, they have a number of um, infrastructure for a city of that size, which for me are very surprising. For instance, here behind you can see uh, the, um, the new library, that's where we held the meeting yesterday and uh, it was just new, just around the corner over there there is the, um, the new concert hall and they also have a new um, town hall which is also very, uh, well, very beautiful to, to be honest. So it's great to, to come to these new places to, to figure out that when we talk about cities, small cities, uh, because 55,000 in my book is, is small, I'm still surprised how advanced, how developed they are um, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of um, circular economy progress um, and in terms of um, will to, to, to progress. Anyhow, uh, what was so different with Bodo? Well, I think what was uh, very uh, new for me, it was that uh, despite the, the large um, square, uh, square meters, uh, the, the large area of Bodo, uh, there was no extraction happening. Uh, there were, uh, you know, in Finland, uh, in Mikkeli, there was a lot of wood extraction. There were some other extractions over here. There was little to no extraction. There was some gravel uh, of low quality that was extracted. In terms of manufacture as well, there is almost nothing. There is a bit of concrete happening, a bit of asphalt happening, uh, some EPS happening, but nothing much. Um, on the use side, of course, there, there are a number of buildings and there's a number of uh, construction that are happening in terms of roads, in terms of building, in terms of other type of infrastructure. So this is rather typical of any city. And that means that most of the materials are imported in the city. In terms of uh, waste management, well, as I said, there is uh, two waste companies here. There is one private, one public, and most of the construction and demolition waste pass through them. Uh, some of the construction demolition waste are recycled by, um, um, how you call them, contractors and uh, uh, building um, companies. The rest is um, uh, treated at the two uh, waste treatment plants and uh, most of them are already sorted on the, on the building sites. Um, then the concrete and some others are crushed and uh, reused, uh, well, recycled locally. Others are sent away. Uh, what was also very interesting is that a lot of uh, waste is exported as well uh, to other places. So let me just show you how the, the sector looks uh, compared to the one of Mikkeli. That's how the sector looks. As I mentioned before, there is little to no extraction here. Manufacturing, there are a couple of manufacturing uh, companies, but not too many of those. Um, and then uh, in the use phase, you see a number of things, of course, because a number of things are constructed. And we had a lot of information in terms of waste. Um, some of the, of the wastes over here is, um, is wood waste, this is incinerated, uh, and then some other uh, bits uh, over here are landfilled, but landfill is mainly gyps, uh, gypsum and then contaminated soil, contaminated concrete. 
nothing, nothing else. Um, and then, as I mentioned here, in down below you can see the exports, and the exports are um, mostly uh, some parts of manufacture and then a percentage of uh, the waste that is not treated here. Um, So again, um, it's exciting to, to come to, to these new places to learn from different contexts. We get to also understand that when we, when we preach about uh, uh, you know, circular construction sectors or uh, circular solutions, that means completely different things based on the context of the city. If you have no extraction, if you have no um, manufacturing, then do you start building new uh, companies here that take care of this uh, uh, waste or that try to reduce importing because they have a lot of resources out here in the case of Norway because the wages are so high perhaps this is not so interesting for for the economy here I, I don't know um, anyhow th that is uh, what we learned so far from the border case we're gonna come back in uh, a couple of months in June to have our well the, the a yearly annual meeting of uh, of the project so i'm really looking forward to see their progress towards it and some of, some of the very exciting things for us that bodo wants to develop is uh, a 3d modeling tool uh, where we will be able to see flows stocks um, but also some uh, perhaps energy use uh, greenhouse gas emissions and um, sdg uh, account well the SD the SDGs might also be visualized there. So I hope we're going to have a, a fit integration between our circular assessment method and their visualization, and this could be used by others. Um, that's it for now. Uh, next stop is Sevilla and then Copenhagen. So I'll try to catch up with you later in these places. Cheers.